Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our live stream of evening prayer from Mr. Michael and All Angels Facebook page. Today is the 24th of August, and we celebrate the Feast of St. Bartholomew. Our worship begins on page 61. With this great cloud of witnesses around us, therefore, we too must throw off every encumbrance and the sin that all too readily restricts us, and run with resolution the race which lies ahead of us, our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. So welcome to those now joining in. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Saviour, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We see the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. We say the canticle, O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, who gave of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. And so let us spend a moment in silence, allowing God to speak to us and remind us of those things which we have done that were not pleasing to Him, those things which we ought to have done that we did not do. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. <coughs> In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms for this evening's office are Psalms 15 and 67. Psalms 1 5 and 6 7 as we commemorate the feast of Saint Bartholomew welcome to those now joining in Psalm 15 begins on page 483 483 Lord who may dwell in your tabernacle who may abide upon your holy hill. Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. 
in his eyes, in his sight, sorry, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and shall be forever. Amen. So welcome to those now joining in. And we are glad that you can make it. And so, as we commemorate the Feast of St. Bartholomew, there is only one gospel in which he is known by another name, and that is the gospel according to John. And he is known by the name of Nathaniel. And so, if you remember the story or the account where Nathaniel and Philip met, or Philip met Jesus, and he went and told Nathaniel, otherwise known as Bartholomew, and he said to Philip, where Philip told him that Jesus was from Nazareth. And Nathaniel's response was, Can anything good come from Nazareth? And when Jesus saw him, he said to him, Here is an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And so it is probably for this reason that Psalm 15 was chosen as the appointed psalm. Because in verse 3 it says, there's, or if we start from verse 2, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart, there is no guile upon his tongue. And this is what, exactly what Jesus said of Nathaniel, an Israelite in whom there is no guile or no deceit. And so, the psalm applies to Nathaniel, who was honest and forthright in what he said and thought. And so we turn to our first lesson from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66, beginning at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 to 2 and 18 to 23 1 to 2 and 18 to 23 and we welcome those who have just joined us thus says the lord heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool what is the house that you would build for me, and what is my resting place? 
all these things my hand has made and so all these things are mine says the Lord but this is the one to whom I will look to the humble and contrite in spirit who trembles at my word for I know their works and their thoughts and I am coming to gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see and shall see my glory and I will set a sign among them from them I will send survivors to the nations to Tarshish, Put and Lud which draw the bow to Tubal and Javan to the coastlands far away that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory and they shall declare my glory among the nations they shall bring all your kindred from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem says the Lord just as Israel as the Israelites bring a grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord and I will also take some of them as priests and as Levites says the Lord for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me says the Lord so shall your descendants and your name remain from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath all flesh shall come to worship before me says the Lord the word of the Lord thanks be to God So we turn to page 67 as we see the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. This Peter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now as an elder myself, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God will have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly, do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, 
You will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you must clothe yourself with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Centurion to page 58, as we say, the Beatitudes, page 58. Yes, about the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, about those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yes, about the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Yes, about those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Yes, about the merciful. For mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. When others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we commemorate. The feast of Saint Bartholomew. I want us to go back to our second lesson from First Peter. And if you were able to follow in your own text, or if you remember what was read, what Peter is saying here should sound familiar, because many of these are the exact same exhortations that Christ made to him, that Christ made to Peter. So, while just before the ascension, after the resurrection and before the ascension, when they, oh, they had gone fishing and they caught nothing, Oh, yes, they did catch something, but when they came out of the boats, Jesus was on the beach and he had a fire going and he told them to bring some of the fish that he had caught. It was then that he took Simon Peter's side and asked him three times, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And each time Peter answered, yes, Lord, Jesus told him to tend the sheep, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. 
and so Peter is speaking here from a position of experience and familiarity when he tells the, he tells the people to be examples of the flock and to tend the flock that uh, is in your charge exercising oversight not under compulsion but willingly in other words don't do it because you are asked to do it don't do it because someone gives you a command or orders you to do it but do it because you want to do it and it's because that is what you you are compelled or you are you are moved to do and in verse 3 he says do not lord it over those in your charge and more than once well actually not more than once but in all in all in the three synoptic gospels we have accounts of the disciples uh, fighting with one another we had it we had it in this morning's gospel as well they were arguing amongst one another about who was the greatest and jesus reminded them that that is not the way of the kingdom people it is the gentiles who lord it over their servants and so here we have peter again exhorting the people to what Jesus himself asked him to do and then we go on to this eight where he says no no let's, let's go to verse five in the same way you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders and as I don't know Peter when he was writing here maybe that that what happened on that day must have been coming back to him because again Jesus told him at, at that same time when you are young you dressed yourself and you went wherever you wished and when you are old someone will take you and put on your belt and lead you where you do not want to go and so Peter is saying those who are young must accept the authority of the elders this may not be but you know it just it just reminds me of what Jesus said to him on the sea of Tiberius that and he's just saying some of the same things here and then you go to verse 8 discipline yourselves and keep alert like a roaring lion your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour and you can see that this almost happened to Peter Peter in his moment of weakness and his moment of fear denied Jesus three times and Jesus warned him before that before that happened Jesus warned him to pray you know he said Satan is going to sift you but I have prayed for you and Jesus warned all of them just before he, he went to the cross that Satan is going to sift them, in other words, he's going to test them. So pray so that you will not fall into sin, into do not, you know, get tricked. But in his moment of weakness, Peter fell and he denied Jesus. But to his, you know, credit, he returned, he, he he did not stop loving Jesus. He did not abandon the way. He did not abandon the cause. And he did not lose his faith like Judas did. If Judas had returned to Jesus and maybe had asked forgiveness and had expressed his regret and his sorrow, things might have been different. Peter that is what Peter did. Peter did not. Peter did not let the the incident, you know, take, block his relationship. He did not let the incident end his relationship and come between him and Jesus. And Jesus reinstated him into into the fold. And so, it is something when we. When we ourselves can 
instruct people and pass on uh, the instruction from what we have learned and especially from what we have experienced. These are all things that Peter experienced, witnessed the sufferings of Christ and one who shared in his glory and he shares in the glory to be revealed. He experienced all of these so he knows what it is like to, to do them. He knows what it is like to be asked to lead a flock, to tend the flock and to, to feed the sheep. He knows what it is like to fall into temptation. He knows what it is like to, to slip and, you know, to, to deny to Jesus and to, to be on the wrong side of, you know, but, and, but he also knows what it's like to experience forgiveness. And so when we speak to people as Christians, as leaders, as people, do, are we speaking from uh, a position of experience? Are we speaking from what we know? Are we speaking from what we went through and now can now ex ask, teach people or, or tell people or let people know, well, yes, this is how it is and this is what, you know, is it our experience? Have we experienced Christ to be able to teach others and to exhort them from what we have learned or from what we have been through? And so, and not, and not just, you know, regurgitating the, the, what, what we have heard others say or maybe what we have learned in Sunday school. Um, but we, are, we have to be able to speak to people, to guide them, and to nurture them from a position of, it, of our experience with Christ. And this is what Peter is doing. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, discipline yourselves, and keep alert. All these things people, Peter experienced firsthand. And so he was, he's able now to tell the people and to advise them on how they ought to live and, and how things ought to be done. So this must be our experience. We must have an experience of the risen Christ and so others will know that we are speaking from the heart and not just following instructions. Yes, we are following instructions, but we are not just um, regurgitating or doing things by root. Ours must be from experience and from the heart. And like we know what we're talking about. Peter knew what he was talking about. So we ought, we ought to know what we're talking about when we speak to people about Jesus. It must be from a personal point of view. The Lord be with you. So we turn to page 67, sorry, page 69, as we see the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and a servant with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. O Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. And so we turn to page 188, as we say the collect for St. Bartholomew, page 188. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who gave to your apostle Bartholomew grace truly to believe and to preach your word, grant that your church may love and receive that word in whom he believed and faithfully preach what he taught through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen like no darkness lord we pray and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant to your servants, O God, to be set on fire with your love, to be enlightened, to be strengthened by your power, to be illuminated by your Spirit, to be filled with your grace, and to move on with your help, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So as we continue in prayer, we pray for God's mercy upon our nation as we prepare to celebrate 60 years of independence. We pray that God will deliver us and will release us from the stronghold of evil and any other thing that hinders our progress as a nation and as a people. We pray for an end to crime, the violence, bloodshed. We pray for an end to corruption. We pray for an end to the practices and the the cultural norms that keep us down as a people. We pray for an end to issues that in our land, the infrastructure that hinder rather than move forward, that break down rather than build up. We pray for a revival. We pray for the political will to do what is right, regardless of the cost, regardless of the political cost. We pray for the will to do what is beneficial to the country, to all aspects of our country, economical, social, environmental. We pray for of those in authority to have the strength to make decisions that will build us up and that will move us forward. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones through violent and traumatic circumstances. We pray that you will comfort them, heal them, and give them peace. We pray for the souls of those who have died under violent and tragic circumstances. We pray that they will find everlasting peace in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live in abusive situations. We pray for their protection. We pray that they will be able to be removed from that situation. And we pray for their healing of emotions and of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who are perpetrators of violence and crime. We pray for a change of heart. We pray that they will encounter your love. We pray that they will resolve to change their ways and to make situations right as, men, as much as they could. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are, about to, who are preparing to return to, to school. We ask that you continue to protect them, to continue to protect our school, to make them safe places for learning and for education for teaching, for extracurricular activities. We pray for the protection of our students from perpetrators, from predators, from all those who want seek to influence them in immoral or illicit activities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the situation of human trafficking around the world, around the globe. Lord, we ask that you put a hedge of protection around potential victims, around those who are targeted or those who are being looked at or groomed for any sort of illicit activities. Lord, we pray that you will always be with them keep them safe. We pray for those who are missing. We ask that wherever they are, that you will be with them, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for their healing and wholeness. We pray for those who are ill in mind and spirit. Lord, we pray that you will be with them and that you will help them to find peace. We pray for those who, we thank you for those who are recovering from surgical medical procedures or recovering from illness. We pray for their complete healing and wholeness and restoration to help. Lord, in your mercy our prayer. We thank you for those who celebrate their birthdays or other special anniversaries at this time. We lift them up to you for your blessing, for health, and strength, and prosperity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for A mother who left her child in a garbage bag at the hospital. Lord, we ask that you meet her at her point of need. We ask that you speak to her heart. Lord, she must have been in a desperate, totally desperate situation. And so we lift her up to you 
for your help and for your assistance. We pray that she will find support where, where needed, where necessary. We pray that she will be able to, to be able to live with herself. Or we pray that you will speak to her, speak to her heart, and speak to her conscience, O oh God. And we pray for the child that was left. We thank you that it was found. And continue to pray for its development. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for these and all our other petitions, we lift them up to you for your for your mercy and grant that you, we pray that you will grant them in your time and in according to your will. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So before we end our act of worship. Let us sing hymn 803 as we end our day of celebration of St. Bartholomew, CPWI 803, and the tune is Bright the Vision that Delighted. That's the tune, CPWI 803. God of saints, to whom the number God of saints, to whom the number of the starry host is known, many saints by earth forgotten, yet forever round your throne. In the room of your apostles stands the name Bartholomew. O oh, if this faithful saint we offer, year by year our thanks to you. All his faith and prayer and patience, all his toiling and his strife. Are all veiled from us, God written in the Lamb's great book of life. There are named the blessed faithful of the new Jerusalem. When Christ comes again in glory, number us we pray with them. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty oh, God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and save all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. So thank you my sisters and brothers for joining us at St. Michael and Holy Angels for the service of evening prayer. Continue to have a peaceful and a restful night. Please note that this Sunday is our 150th anniversary celebratory service which will take place at All Saints at 4 p.m. And so there will be no evening prayer, but the service will be live streamed on either the Anglican Outlook Facebook page or maybe St. Michael and All Angels Facebook page as well on, on the YouTube channel. 
so do tune in 4 p.m. at All Saints our 150th anniversary celebration we will be using the purpose for the Feast of the Transfiguration which is a transfer feast the celebrant and preacher will be the most reverend Howard Gregory the Archbishop of the, the province of the West Indies so do you tune in this Sunday and so there will be no evening prayer from St. Michael or Anno Angels because some of us will have to be there. Alright? So have a safe night and join, don't forget to join Holy Trinity for Compline to end the night peacefully and restfully and spiritually. So take care, be careful, take care of yourselves and be safe.